Well, after two weeks of straight rain, we finally have some decent weather. And by that I mean cloudy, but no rain. So I thought I'd come out again to Pit Meadows and see what I could find. I've been doing a little bit of exploring, but I just can't seem to find that right view. I think I'm close. I, I want to get another angle on a spot that I just checked out. Uh, so let's go have a look. Well, perfect. I uh, found the view I was looking for. I mean, it has a, has a lot going for it. It has some nice depth. Some sun kissing different grasses and getting some golden browns. And it's actually quite nice. A water reflection, the various timbers, the trees. Some bright greens here and there and some uh, bright golden grasses. I think it's going to make a nice composition. With everything set up, I started laying out my composition with a sketch with the intent of fixing all my errors at the beginning rather than trying to fix them at the end. But this takes a while, so why don't we just fast forward? Alright, now that we have that done and I put down the last few strokes here, let's get right into the painting. I generally start with my darks, so you see me putting on the left, I'll move to the right, establish that uh, fern tree back there, then I'll move into the foreground, and then I'll do some touches on the background. Pretty simple, just establishing the darks, getting the shape in, creating a pattern, that's it. Once all those darks are established, I uh, pop right into the water, lay it in quick and dirty, trying to get the value correct, making sure it gradates from foreground to background. Now working smart like I sometimes do, I'm going to use the value of this water, I'm going to move it up into the sky, but I will be changing the temperature, maybe the hue, just a little bit. That's it for the sky. To move into the distant mountains, all I have to do is add a little bit of cobalt blue and put it in. Then I quickly move into my uh, green mixture there, throw a little white in, maybe a little bit of blue, and I'll throw in the distant trees that you see in the background. With plein air, sometimes you just got to paint as efficiently as you can, and I find this is a really easy way to go about it. And from there, I start putting in all the golden tones you see in the grasses, in the background, moving into the foreground. It's always a fun time when you bring out the lights in a painting. It really brings everything to life. It gives you the incentive to keep on painting. I continue with the grasses, but primarily in the front there, working on the darks, trying to establish a pattern down there. Remember though, this isn't the focus of the painting, so as long as it's close, yeah, it doesn't really need to be a lot of detail. Now that's pretty much it for the block end, so what I'm going to start doing is focusing on that left tree, trying to get the pattern of the... Uh, different branches that I can see in the foliage to make it look like it's more of a fir tree than anything else. I spent quite a bit of time on this and I don't really go back to this section after that so it tells you that I put down what I wanted and that's all I really needed. It isn't the focus of the painting so as long as it looks like a fir tree, it is a fir tree. With that tree complete we move into the timbers in the foreground and then that metal timber that sticks into the water which I intend to be the focal point of the painting. Once I'm done establishing that log I move into the sky holes of the tree on the right. And as I like to do, I'm taking the time to scratch some branches, some sticks, and some dead foliage into the paint. I then take the time to define some fallen trees and debris within the area. All for the sake of really creating some interest. That really isn't there, but it is there. It's just for context, more or less. Back into that water to change some of the values and to cut into the shape of the reflection and also some of those foreground timbers. Now after blocking in most of the masses here, what I do is I start uh, putting in the uh, limbs of the fallen trees in the foreground there. You'll see me take one of those limbs out later when I have to put in a reflection of a tree that I put in soon. And it's because I didn't want the uh, conflict of the two uh, elements coming together. I start moving into the grasses in front of that log to give it a little sense of depth. I'm trying to put in detail but with a lot, not a lot of detail. It's just putting in the essence of stuff, correcting some values there. And then here I am putting in that uh, tree coming up. Right. Now I realize, okay, well that tree has to reflect into the water. So I have to remove that one limb coming out of the foreground fallen log so I can put in a reflection. Otherwise, I think it would just create too much, um, uh, for lack of a better word, conflict there. It'd be, uh, you'd be wondering what's actually going on. Throwing in some sky holes in the tree up top and then also into the reflection. And that's one thing I really love about plain air is that it forces you to make somewhat big decisions rather quickly and then not think about it later. Um, it, it, it's a very good training tool for sure. Moving on to do some um, water reflections and then over to the right hand tree to do some adjustments back into the foreground. Now going in with a big brush and adjusting that uh, pine tree in the far right. And going in a small brush, trying to get some grasses in there. More or less just back and forth, back and forth. We're trying to get a sense of uh, feeling in the uh, foreground and a sense of grasses and some depth, but without actually portraying a lot of detail. And I just go back and forth here and there. Now moving into that uh, mid-ground tree. Trying to put some branches on it, 
it's fall, so all the leaves have fallen and whatnot. Uh, I'm just trying to get the essence of what a tree looks like. I kind of follow what's there, but many times I do change it just so br branches and limbs don't kiss with other objects in the in the scene. I try to get objects to overlap more rather than just touching. At this point, I'm spending quite a bit of time just throwing in some uh, grasses, scratching in some limbs and branches that are inconsequential but really help make the scene. Using a small rigger brush to try to bring out some uh, finer grasses. Now to a part of the painting that I was finally looking forward to the whole time since I started is putting in those back trees there. So I get a really fine rigger brush. I think it's a zero and I start putting in those trees, clump of trees in the, in the background there. I'm trying to get the right value, trying to get the right shapes, trying to make them just appear like they should be in the background there. I, was, I think that was my most enjoyable part of this painting next to the initial blocking. And now to another very satisfying point of the painting where I'm putting in the uh, green on a distance path in the background there. Behind those trees and in between those trees. It was just so nice to see that light coming through and it really helped create a sense of distance. And moving into the golden grasses you see in the background. Bringing in that into the foreground to give it a little more sense of light. And just going back and forth between all three sections. So I'm continuing with that small rigor and putting grasses in the foreground. You can see how it starts bringing detail into it without actually painting a lot of detail. So I established a lot of the warm cools, lights and darks with the broad, big broad brush strokes beneath all these little rigor marks and then putting the rigor marks on top give it a little bit of sense of depth and a little sense of detail. There you just saw me putting in some lights just to bring out some highlights within those that foreground a little bit. Now it's just a matter of bringing out the other rigor, putting in some uh, details Within the big ground and background shoals, fixing a little bit of the water, putting some uh, water holes within the grasses themselves, I'm trying to make sure I have enough detail to help portray what I want to come across. Now back into the foreground, throwing in some lights to create a little bit of sparkle. Then I decided it needs a little bit of violet, those cool grasses that you sometimes see, and that really helps, of course, pop up. The yellows as well it just it's that variation in color and temperature within an area that creates a little bit of interest more than you would expect and with those last few strokes i decide the painting is done so i throw my signature in the bottom right hand corner that was a fantastic day painting goes to show you you should just get out and paint uh, there's nothing like plain air painting at all most of the day it started to cloud over and of course now the sun comes out that's good because i'm freezing i need to get back to the car uh, i hope you enjoyed this video Hit that like button, subscribe if you can, hit that bell button as well, uh, share it with your friends, everything helps me a lot. Thanks so much. Cheers guys.